Welcome to News Now, the Belmont Journal's daily update on what's going on in the community of Belmont. I'm your host, Roger Colton. I have with me today, Franklin Tucker, who is the editor and publisher of the Belmontonian, Belmont's online source for hyperlocal news. Franklin, the town of Belmont has federal COVID dollars uh, uh, coming to it. Can you tell us uh, about that? Sure thing. Um, um... Uh, back in, on the 11th of March, when um, uh, Joe Biden uh, uh, signed that uh, nearly $2 trillion um, uh, rescue package, um, a few days after that, um, uh, uh, Belmont uh, was uh, told that it was going to get uh, um, something like uh, $8.6 million in federal aid that was going to be for COVID. One, one million of that was going to be directed just to schools. Um, so there was a lot of anticipation. People were, uh, you know, uh, and, and it turned out that it was part of uh, the uh, um, uh, debate concerning uh, the override. Uh, people who were saying we don't need an override started cheering uh, the news because they said we can use, you know, that money to uh, put into the bottom line for Belmont. And so we would we don't need a, a six point two million dollar override. Now, the people who are saying you know, people who are saying yes to the override uh, uh, said that. Uh, that's the money is great because we need we have a lot of COVID expenses, but that's not going to affect the structural deficit that we have. So the override will have to go forward. There's been a give and take. You know, there's been a, a lot of talk and a lot of information that's being put out. And it, and 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 what happened is that the town administration and also the financial task force, along with Warren Committee, said let's really look at the numbers and see what what the information says. Now, um, of of the money that's out there. Uh, to, to make a long story short, they did the analysis. They looked at the wording of, of the uh, language that the uh, federal government has already given out. You know, they, they were still looking for a little bit more clarity because, you know, where can this money go to? But if uh, just by the information that they have now, um, the, the town will be able to, to use about 700000 to $1.1 million and put it into their bottom line because that would be for the recovery of um, – uh, ex uh, revenue that's lost by COVID. And, you know, that's like parking expense, you know, like parking and, 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 and all the all taxes. Rest, especially restaurant taxes. So, um, and uh, when it comes to schools, um, that money will go directly to uh, what, what is called the COVID parking lot. And that's where um, last year the, the town, the, the school committee said, uh, the school committee and the school administration said, we know that there's going to be a package of relief money. So what we're, uh, it, we know that it's going to be coming either from the state or the federal government. So we're, what we're going to do is take all those COVID expenses we had from air, you know, air purification, from PPEs, you know, everything that you can think of that a school district would need. And we're going to place it in a separate what they call the COVID parking lot. So they have expenses. And they, 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 they said, you know, let's see how much money we're going to get. Well, that million dollars, along with other money, is going to pay for a good portion of that, along with the beginning of, of funding what is called academic recovery you know, over the summer and over next year. And that is like summer school, just, you know, uh, children who are targeted uh, for uh, who need that extra uh, uh, academic rigor because they lost it over the um, uh, over the last year when when most of their uh, most of the most of the times they were taught remotely and they just you know they need that extra push to get to catch up with everyone so all the money is now being spent you know it's and and it doesn't look like it's going to go down to the bottom line and what we saw uh, uh, is that um, the um, people who are for yes on the override said aha told you. <laughs> it's, it's not going to help. It's going to be a fraction of, of the amount of money that we need for the override. And um, those people who said no are, they're, they're kind of, I, I, I don't want to, their response was, well, everybody, you know, all the, all the, um, like the, like the town, admin, uh, everybody who's on a uh, elected board or, or elected committee um, or, 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 on, or, or on a committee, you know, they've given money to the uh, yes uh, uh, for the yes on the override. And so are they slow playing us? Are they not telling us the real money? And, you know, that's a, you know, that's really not um, looking at the facts. That's being a little emotional. So, you know, trying to say, oh, well, these people aren't telling us the truth. Well, they're telling you the truth as much as they can, because, you know, and it, it's not like they're just putting out this figure by like saying, oh, there's 700,000 or 1.1 million that can cover our budget. 
they're showing you where that money comes from and where that money's going. So there are, there's still hope among the people who say no for um, the, uh, 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 for the override by saying, uh, you know, we're going to know by, by the 11th and, and usually the federal government will loosen the, uh, the restrictions on that. So it might be even going more to our bottom line, but that's just, you know, wishful thinking right now. And quite aside from how much is coming and to what uses it will be placed, do we know when that money will be available to the town of Belmont? They say that it's. They say it's going to be coming quickly. I mean, it's a, it's a, the, the act was signed, so it's now just waiting for the money to come in. Yeah, but they can they can already anticipate that money coming in. There, the town is also just waiting for some more clarification. So. Uh, they'll have that money already uh, put into the uh, budget the way they, they think it's they, they, it's going to go. So, and, you know, the budget doesn't have, you know, we can ask for an extension if, if the money doesn't come in by June 31st, um, June 30th, when we, when we start the new fiscal year on July 1st. Okay, let's close the door on money. Let's talk uh, more about COVID because the Board of Health has uh, uh, given some recent advice that affects the, the, the town government of Belmont. That's right. So uh, just how the residents, um, uh, <coughs> it's, it's uh, basically what the, the health um, uh, department said, or the health commission said, is that uh, the health board, I should say, um, uh, they uh, were, at, there was a request for them to consider um, uh, opening uh, uh, town, uh, like a local town meetings, um, like the select board or the school committee, opening that to the public. And um, the request was, for a really early um, um, uh, reopening, such as in like the first week, second week in April. And uh, they just shut that down. They said it's way too early. We, know we were seeing a little bit of a, a spike in, 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 in COVID rates. It's just, too, it's too early to decide. They're gonna wait until their May meeting to basically give it okay uh, or, 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 or say, let's just wait a little bit longer. So. There won't be any in-person um, meetings until at least May, if not June, July. And the Board of Health really had pretty encouraging news about vaccinations in Belmont. That's right. Uh, we are uh, uh, the, the number of vaccinations. Uh, Wesley Chin said on Monday um, that uh, Belmont is uh, right up there with the state, 17 percent right now. That's almost one fifth. And, and, and that's just going to increase with the uh, number of Places that are going to be giving out vaccines, such as supermarkets, will soon be uh, giving giving those out with which have pharmacies. Uh, hopefully, they won't be giving it out in the fruit and vegetable section. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and, and just by the number that is coming into the state, you know, and uh, um, it should be uh, we should be uh, matching the state's level. We're not behind or or rocketing ahead. So. Uh, Belmont is just is, is moving forward on, on in terms of vaccination. That's great. And finally, there was disturbing news recently about graffiti at the Wellington, but uh, there there's an update on that. That's correct. Uh, the the uh, 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 police updated uh, the, the town on in terms of uh, their investigation, and what what they discovered is that. Um, a couple on um, the weekend before the uh, the graffiti was discovered uh, uh, by students at the Wellington on Monday. On that Saturday, a uh, eyewitness said he saw a person, you know, writing on the wall uh, uh, on the face of the um, uh, of the Wellington uh, near where the uh, flagpole is, and uh, you know he confronted the person, and it, and it turned out that the person was a very young uh, man uh, between the ages of eleven and thirteen. Um, and, uh, so it, it appeared, so it's not an adult. Um, it, uh, the words uh, that he wrote down was, were more in terms of like saying, I don't like a subject and, uh, then use the N word. Um, so that's the information that they came out with. Um, uh, they're still uh, trying to, uh, look for the person, um, and um, see if they can find them. Uh, but uh, as uh, Jamie McIsaac, our police chief, has said that um, you know this is still you know whether it's in, the, the intent was just you know ignorance or just bolsterism, it's still it's still a very serious incident, and it shouldn't be taken lightly just because of the age of the person. And um, and he said you know the, the town has to be you know um, has to be you know the police and and the town have to be responsive to incidents like this. 
That's great. Thanks for bringing us up to date. We've been talking with Franklin Tucker, editor and publisher of the Belmontonian. You've been watching News Now, the Belmont Journal's daily update on what's going on in the community of Belmont. Thanks for watching. I'm your host, Roger Colton. I'll talk with you again next time.